Welcome to the Maximo Application Suite video series brought to you by Maven Asset Management. Maven is an IBM Gold business partner focusing in implementation, technical, and support services for IBM Maximo. In this video series, we're going to take a look at Maximo and manage and utilizing and exploring Cognos Analytics. Specifically, we'll take a look at how you can get started or explore on your own Maximo data and Cognos Analytics without implementing any integration installations within Maximo itself. We're going to simply export some data from Maximo and bring it over into Cognos. And while I'm going to show you everything within the Maximo application suite, these steps could also be performed in the Maximo 7.6 releases. So to get started today, let's take a quick look at what our video series is going to shape up to be. First, we're going to focus on that Maximo data export prep. Then in the next three videos, we're going to go into Cognos. We'll take the data we export from Maximo, bring it into Cognos, prep it for exploration. Then in the third and fourth steps, we're going to have Cognos do all the work. We're going to have Cognos explore the data and present to us what those great visualizations and insights can be. But let's get started today because you'll see there's a tremendous focus on the data, right? We got to make sure our data is prepped and ready to be analyzed in Cognos. So first to start out, let's take a step back and look at a very, very high level view of what we're doing here today. On the far left hand side, you have Maximo or Manage set up and you have a Maximo database. Well, how do we get the data that's here in the database over into Cognos so it can be analyzed? Well, there's a number of different mechanisms that we can do without enabling the integration installation with Maximo. So what we're going to focus on is just exporting CSV data. And we can do that many different ways. We could have a result set. We could export from the list tab. But in our, our example, we're going to do an app export. And I'll tell you about that in just a minute. But there's other mechanisms that are available. You can connect your Maximo database to Cognos Analytics and have Cognos pull on the data that way, but you need a license for that. Another way that you also need a license is you can create what is called a Cognos package. The package has preformed data relationships, so you're able to join those tables together. Maximo has a number of features to enable that if you use the integration, or you can create those manually in Framework Manager. Again, you need a license to do that, so that's why we're focusing up here on the file exports because we're going to be using the free license of Cognos Analytics to analyze our data. So how do we enable this, right? Let's look at this because this can involve a number of steps. It might seem overwhelming, but it's really not. It's a simple process to how we can form data to push it over to Cognos. As I mentioned, we're going to use app export. I love app export because it gives you functionality where you can take data from multiple related tables. So think work order and then bring in data from assets and locations and job plans and whatever else you want to do and push those over to Cognos. And the beauty of using app export over something like a result set is app export enables you to dynamically grab an application query at runtime to pull that over. So super powerful. So how do we do this? Well, there's seven steps that are listed here, and I'll do a demo to highlight each one of these. We're going to create an object structure. We set the header up for export to, um, and integration. We're going to validate that object structure, simplify our attributes, modify the al alias, modify app export support, and then confirm security access to export. So again, there's a number of steps we have to take but they're really powerful. You do it once and you're done and you're ready to go. So I'm going to head over now to Maximo and show you the steps involved. All right, excellent. Here we are in Maximo or Manage and I'm in the object structure application. So what I'm going to do is create a new integration object structure so I can app export data creating that CSV file. I could start from scratch, but I always love to utilize what's already there in Maximo today. And so I'm going to use two existing object structures and I'm going to combine them to form the one that I need. First is this MX asset. When I look at this object structure, it's used for integration, but what's so important for me is to grab this outbound definition class and inbound processing class. So I'm just going to do a copy and paste of those, right? This is 
proven a proven object structure that I can app export from. So again, I need to get this information into my new value. Well, now let me go back over here and access my bookmarks and now pull up the other object structure that I want to use to create my own. And this is a reporting one. Now, why I like this one is it gives me this great hierarchy of and objects and related children. So at the top level, I have work order and look at all these child objects that are already pre-joined for me. Now this is much more information that I'm gonna to use today, but it's easier to start from with something, delete what you don't use, than start from scratch. So let me show you how I'm gonna combine the two. So I'm gonna take this one for reporting, I'm gonna duplicate it, and we're gonna call this our CAMX demo object structure. I'm gonna leave the name there, that's fine. But what's important to me is to change it to integration. I must use an integration object structure for app import and export. So before I save it, I'm gonna also bring over that information that I had in my previous um, MX asset integration. Remember that? outbound and inbound class. So let's save that. And I forgot to put in the um, inbound, which in this case is M A X asset. Perfect. Let's just save that for now. And now after I've done that, that's step number one where I've created and duplicated my object structure. The other thing I need to do is make sure that flat structure is supported, that's super important, right? Because we need to get that CSV file. So after I enable that flag, I wanna start coming down and look at my object structure attributes or my hierarchy and clean them up a little bit. This is more than I need. Well, let's see what we've got here. I want to actually navigate to the beginning and let's take a look Wow, there's a lot here, right? Look at this hierarchy. There's much more information that I want. So let me just skinny down this menu here if I can find that flag. Well, I'm not going to be able to. So let me just come over here and get rid of some of these. Um, I don't really need information on multi-assets and loc. Um, I'm not gonna get individual labor. I don't need a lot of detail on job plans. Whoa, activity. Let's scroll else. But what else can we maybe get rid of? Um, I'm not going to grab my items. I'm going to assume I don't have a lot of service is tools is okay. Lab trans material. Again, I'm going to get rid of my services, my SLA, my com log. See how easy it is for me to delete things that I really don't need. And now let me come back up here and save. And after I do that, let's take a look at what our hierarchy looks like. All right, let's take a look at that. Oh, see how this is? This is much nicer. So I have my work order, child objects of asset locations, plant labor materials and tools, and then these are my trans tables, which are my actual information. That sounds great. So I validated my hierarchy. That was step number three. The next thing I need to do is we all know there's so many attributes in every single table in Maximo, and especially in um, work order, right? So this dialogue is extremely important. It's the exclude and include fields. What this is saying is, okay, now I'm on my work order, which is my parent. If I scroll down here, I'm looking at the persistent fields only. Reporting only works for, or excuse me, integration wor is working mostly with the persistent fields, or that's gonna be our focus here. And we need to exclude all those fields that we don't think we need to be analyzed, right? We're not gonna analyze, for example, an external ref ID. So this is, again, so important because if you leave all these fields over and bring them all over into your um, analytic tool like Cognos, you're gonna get so much information there, it's gonna be overwhelming and your users won't need to, or won't know what to analyze. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff. Um, uh, I don't, I just want labor hours. It doesn't matter to me if they're internal or external. And so I just simply come in here, look at every single 
field that's in here and determine is this important to me or not? Is this important as this information is analyzed? Now this is gonna take a little bit of time. I've got nine tables here that I've got to go through. And again, it's a one-time activity, super important that you do that. So I'm gonna stop, stop here while I complete this activity and then I'll be right back where we go into the next step and look at our aliases. All right, excellent. So I have just completed going through the dialog to exclude fields. And again, we only wanna push over the data that we think is going to be analyzed. So you need to go through the parent and each one of the children, really clean it up and specify what fields you want to be excluded from your import, or excuse me, your export, whether that might be a GL account, a GIS, an extra field, whatever, something that you can't really analyze. So I've done that. And I should also mention, if you're unsure of an attribute, go to database configuration in Maximo, check it out, and that'll give you the additional information. So I've done that four step where I've simplified everything. Now I need to take a look at my aliases. So what Maximo is telling me here, many fields have the same label or title in Maximo. So work order number might be in work order table, but it also might be in asset and location. So for us to identify clearly what the value of that field is, we may have to make sure they have unique field names. So the object structure gives me this great dialogue here. I'm all set when I look at work order, but now look what happens when I click on asset. I've got some duplicate fields for install date, for example. So I'm probably gonna find the same field name and location, so I need to make it unique. I, I usually do um, go like asset underscore to identify exactly where that field is coming from for my unique names. So again, this will take me just a few minutes to go through each one of these fields to, and I should make this a little bit easier on myself and do a copy paste here. So I'll just copy that value up here and all the way through. And again, I'm gonna to have to go look at every single child table. Again, I have unique values. In this case, I won't write out, I'll just go location. LOC underscore, and again, making that field unique. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up, and then we'll be right back and go on to our next step when we set up our application export support. All right, so great. Again, we've modified our export aliases, so everything is unique here. There's no duplicates, and I can scroll through each one of my child objects to confirm the same. So we've done that work, so we're almost there. And now what we need to do is to modify or add application export support. So what this is saying to me, okay, is from what Maximo application do you want to enable the support from? So I simply wanna click on the plus or the new row button. By default, it's reporting or defaulting to quick reporting, which is fine, I'm gonna leave that there. Um, so again, what is this telling me? Quick reporting, that's the application. This is say the maximum number of records it's gonna enable me to export is 100. I'm gonna leave it there. But all I always like to make sure that I default it to a flat file. The flat file is gonna enable that CSV export. So that's great, I like that one. So now we want to make sure we add another one. And in this case, we're gonna look for WOTRAC, work order tracking. Nice. Again, let's make that a flat file, but let's bring this up a little bit. Let's bring this up to 300 records, <clears throat> excuse me, and let's make it a default. So now when I go to do an application export, I can see multiple object structures, but this one will always show by default. So again, this is our CAMX demo. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then the last thing we need to do, our seventh step is to confirm our export and signature security or the security group. So let me go to the security group app. Let me just bring up a max admin group and let's just make sure that we're all set here. If I click on my applications, I filter here where I always get confused is work order. Oh goodness, work. Let's find the application. Here it is, work order tracking. We name it so many different ways in Maximo. Um, what I wanna do now is, it shows you right here, application export, it's enabled. 
So sometimes what you might find is if you first set up an integration object structure for an application and you don't enable the app export from that application, you're not going to see it in the security group. So always make sure you do that last action that I had just performed. Again, if we go back to our object structure, let's pull up our bookmarks. Here's our CA one that we're looking for. Again, once you set this dialog up or enable the, uh, the uh, individual rows, these will then show up in the security group app. If you don't do this action, you won't see the action or, or the ability to perform that action within the security group. So super important. So wow, we've made a lot of progress here. So now let's go over to work order tracking. So now I'm in work order tracking and now let's use this object structure. How do we do that? Well, let's take a look at our queries. Look, we got all of these queries, tons of things that we can look at. I'm just gonna pull this first one as an example. And now I'm gonna go to application export. See how this defaults to my demo or my default of my object structure? Here's other ones that are available. Um, let's take a look at the configuration. Perfect, we like that flat file, but I'm gonna change this actually to a comma. That seems to work a little bit better. And now we're gonna export that data. Okay, great. So from that app export that I've just performed, what happened is a CSV file is created. It takes the fields that I've defined in the object structure and applies it to the query from the application. And then we'll create the CSV file that goes to your download folder. I've opened it up here in the presentation and you can see a couple of things. First off, at the very part or beginning part of the, the file name is the name of the object structure, CXMX demo, and then there's a bunch of unique numbers assigned. But again, here's each one of the child attributes from the parent and child objects that are displayed and the values are coming from that application query. So again, that's why I love to use an app export because it gives you maximum flexibility. You can use it whatever query you have defined in the application and it's gonna give you phenomenal number of fields from that parent and child object. So what have we done here today? We've done a ton because we created that initial integration object structure for our application export. We started by duplicating the report object structure. We made it available for integration. We copied over that inbound and outbound cl class that was in our setup and made sure it was enabled for flat file support. Then we validated the object structure. Remember how I started out with over 20 objects in that hierarchy and I just cleaned it up to really skinny down the query or the hierarchy to what is needed. And then in the fourth step, we went from looking at the objects to the individual attributes. Only bring over those attributes in that XLS file or CSV file that you're going to analyze. After we did that, we made sure everything had a unique field name or alias. So we had to um, append or prepend some of those fields with asset or location or whatever the child object name is to make it unique so we understand that field name. And then in step six, we had to make sure we're saying, okay, I've created this great integration object structure, but where, I'm gonna, where am I gonna access it from in Maximo? And that's what we did here. We said we're gonna access it from both quick reporting and work order tracking. We defined the maximum number of record limits that a user can export because we don't want them exporting millions of records from the database. That's a huge performance hit. And then lastly, in the seventh step, we went into the security group app to make sure our user had access. So again, this gives us phenomenal functionality that we're gonna now use as we build into the next steps of our video series, where we're gonna take some of this data, import it into Cognos, prep the data so we can analyze it and explore and present. So thank you very much for your time today as we continue Maven Asset Management Maximo application video series on Maximo and Cognos. Thank you.